Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. Well, today I'm reviewing another new cigar from H. Upman. And as part of their 175th anniversary celebration, today's choice is named after the founder. This is Herman's Batch. And this is the Toro 6x52. Nice little pigtail finishing at the cap. And there is your density. Has a pretty good feel in the hand. Very good feel, actually. Now, as a little bit of a history lesson, let me let me tell you a little bit about the background and the origins of H. Upman, because it is rather interesting. H. Upman had its origins back in Cuba, where founder Herman Upman opened his first cigar factory in 1844, which is the, explains the number 1844 on all their bands. The company went bankrupt in 1922 and the name and production was eventually acquired by Menendez and Garcia company, the company that made Monte Cristo. The Cuban revolution led to the nationalization of Cuban cigar companies, including H. Upman. And as a result, Menendez and Garcia would move the brand to the Canary Islands, then to the, the Dominican Republic. The brand would eventually come under the ownership of all Tatas, and this is why there is a Cuban H. Upman and a Dominican H. Upman. So I hope that helps you a little bit, knowing the history of H. Upman. I'll try not to do that again, but I thought it would be good to talk, tell you. This cigar, wrapper, Ecuadorian Habano, binder, Dominican, filler, Dominican and Nicaraguan, Condega and Esteli, or the Nicaraguan tobaccos, made in the Dominican Republic in the Tabacalara de, de Garcia factory. Comes in four sizes, Corona Gorda, Robusto, Toro, Today's Choice, and a Lonsdale. And that is the long and the short of it. So let's get right to it. The new Herman's Batch Toro from H. Upman. Nice, nice little pon uh, pig pony tail, pigtail here. So I'm going to just clip that right off as best I can. Let me get around here and so I can get to it. Okay. I'm going to use the perfect draw because I'm not taking any more off. I'll be right back. Okay, that did it. Now I'm going to have to remove this little band at the foot, and it's coming off rather easily. It looks like there's no damage to the uh, cigar. If you don't have a perfect draw, get one, period. All right, here we go. First flavors are a little cedar and some brown sugar and a touch of a buttery whipping cream, quite a bit of nutmeg, quite a bit of an earthy black coffee. I'm also getting a lot of that baby aspirin orange citrus mixed in with the brown sugar and the uh, cedar. Pretty nice. A white pepper at probably about seven. So that's how you start. And I am uh, I'm going to see how we look at the first third, but that's a pretty good start. The draw is still a little bit tight, and I'm going to work with it a little more. But uh, those are your initial flavors. So let's see what happens by the first third. Well, we're here at the first third. <clears throat> and um, the flavors are going about like I described. The uh, baby aspirin orange flavor is not a um, the only flavor there. When you get that flavor, you also get the cedar and quite a bit of, uh, of uh, brown sugar. So it's not so much like a normal Nicaraguan cigar where you, that's the main 
soul flavor. There is a, uh, uh, a trio of flavors that you get right up front. There is quite a bit of nutmeg, as I said. There is some cream there, giving it a very high-pitched sweet flavor. And a lot of earthy black coffee. I would call a cigar medium body right now. The finish is quite a bit of cream. Hmm. And uh, pretty decent uh, lingering pepper. I believe it's just cream. But the cigar is very tasty right now. It's a, it's, it's, it's a nice mix of flavors that I have not in this mix run across lately. So I'm liking it a lot. I'm rating the first third 93. I really want to see some things blossom. But uh, we'll see what happens by the second third and see where we're there at that point. Well, we're here at the end of the second third. And the cigar has changed a little. I don't really have that uh, baby aspirin orange flavor anymore. I've got cedar and brown sugar. Still that little touch of cream, nutmeg, and quite a bit of earthy black coffee. It's actually risen. I would say the cigar is medium to full. Finish is pretty much unchanged. It's still a lot of cream. Nice lingering pepper. We'll leave it at white pepper. But here in the second, third, things sort of transitioned away from some of the sweet flavors and more on the darker notes of uh, earthy black coffee. So I'm lowered at 91. And the final third will really tell us where we stand. So. Let's see what happens. Well, we're down to the end, so let's wrap it up. Well, we had a little improvement here at the end. Nice brown sugar notes came out. The cedar was not the thing you really noticed the most. You noticed that nice brown sugar. And uh, the, the nutmeg subdued a little bit. The black coffee dropped a little bit. But you've got a lot of brown sugar and black coffee. That's the things you're going to notice the most. The cream really isn't there anymore. But uh, I actually like the cigar more in this third than, it is sec than I did in the second third. I would still go medium to full bodied and the finish is pretty much unchanged, but I'm going to raise the score to 92 for the final third. Um, you lost a lot of the flavor notes, but this cigar really tasted pretty good. So that'll give you an overall score, if I'm correct, of 92. And that's about where it belongs. Uh, it's a good cigar. It's just not um, consistent. But uh, the changes it made, first third was really good. And the final third was pretty good. So it's, it, it, it averages out well and uh, good cigar. So there you have it, the H. Upman Herman's Batch Toro 92.